Hi everyone and welcome to Tap Into Your Creativity. I am so excited to be joined today by Charlie French and meet Charlie all the way from Dallas, Texas. Sandra, here she comes. Can you hear me okay, Karen? Hey. Uh, Hi. Hi. Thank you. You can, hear, you can hear me okay? Yes. Can you hear us? Yes. Perfectly well. Yes. Thank Good. you so much for joining us today. Charlie, I'm so excited that you're here. And I want to just say thank you so much, Karen, for helping us um, make this day happen. I'm so excited for everyone to get to know Charlie and get to know his work and, um, and, and just get to know his beautiful soul that comes out in this incredible way of painting. And so um, you. if you want to just do a, a small introduction and then we'll go to Charlie. Sure. Great. So um, I'm Charlie's mom and Charlie is uh, our first son. And about six or seven years ago, he uh, told us that he, he was an artist and that was his job and he was going to call it Art for Dollars. And my husband and I are not artists. We didn't know what that meant, but we <laughs> figured out a way to help him. That's <laughs> so incredible. that's why we're here in the studio. Yeah. That is just incredible. Um, so um, are you, so you help, you'll, you'll tell us in a little bit, a little bit more about Charlie, but let's go to Charlie right now and, um, and ask okay, him cool. a few questions if, if that's okay. And that's um, great. He's all let set. Let us know when, when you're ready. Let's see. We are, Charlie, are you ready, handsome? Yes. Okay. He's ready. All right. He just lives. Okay. Here we go. What is your name and where do you live? <clears throat> My name is Joey French. I live in Dallas, Texas. Your name is Charlie French and you live in Dallas, Texas. That's incredible. And what type of artist are you? I am an abstract artist. You're an abstract artist. And where do you work? I work here in my studio, which is in my house. Oh, you're so lucky. <laughs> Not a lot of people are so lucky than like you, Charlie. Um, <laughs> tell us about your process. I just paint what I want. I said my exercise I give this. I put my box on the canvas and I paint. Okay, so you just paint what you want and you start by activating the canvas and you put your marks on the canvas and then you paint and then you let go and then you're free. That is so beautiful, Charlie. Yeah. Um, what inspires you? <coughs> Music, movies, water, my imagination. So music, movies, water, and your imagination. That's, that's incredible. Have you been able to create at home during COVID? Yes, I'm so busy. I paint almost every day. That's amazing, Charlie. Good for you. And um, what are your top three tips that you give people? Well, one, <coughs> I'm just... If you day, be free and go have fun. That is the key for sure. So practice every day, be free and let go and have fun. And I and you sure have fun. You're incredible. So what have you been working on? I have a show in Austin. In April. <clears throat> I am putting this goal to full screen. I am using what have been colors. Incredible. So you have a show in Austin, um, Texas in April. 
And uh, you're painting on a series right now that's called Joyful Series. And you're using bright, happy colors that make all of us very happy. So um, where can people find your art, Charlie? I still see the Instagram. My website is my portfolio, Aunt Lifty, and some of my paintings to my children, Six Studio in Austin. Okay, so this is great. So people can find you on Instagram and they can find you, um, you know, at your show. Is it at Sage Studio in Austin? And we're just so excited, Karen. Thank you. This is unbelievable. He's so inspiring to all of us. And, and the way that he really, he, he lets go. He is free. He uses color to be happy. Exactly how he articulated all of that. Right. He's, he's having a Gatorade break. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. He's finished with the microphone. He's gone to the other side of the table. He has his schedule for the Instagram live. And so he's following. I love it. it. <laughs> I, I love it. You tell me and we're going to follow right through. This is incredible. So, um, so I'm sure he inspires you, Karen, every day in the studio. He, he, it must be a surprise to you every day what he's going to create. I think that's one of the coolest parts about being with him here in the studio is that I never know what he's going to do. And even when he has a series like his In the Fathoms Below series, which is, you know, same color palette usually, similar process, they all look different. I, I, I don't know what he's going to do. And, and it's exciting. It's so exciting. So um, should we do the studio tour now? I, I or, thought maybe or... I could do background before he That would be perfect. That's yeah, right. Let's I, do that. I think that. Is so that let's okay? start from the beginning, Karen. So, let's start from the beginning. Tell us a little bit about when he was born and, and just his story. Sure. That'd be great. Sure. So, you know, obviously Charlie has Down syndrome. He was our first child. We were lucky in that he's been pretty healthy for most of his life until he was about 16. He uh, was a great reader, uh, loved books from an early age, has a wicked sense of humor, uh, loves relationships and to tease people, to be sassy. Um, he loved the computer and he was very independent. At 11, he could shower independently and tie his shoes, which, you know, are, are I have other kids who are 11 and weren't showering. Well. <laughs> Sorry if they're listening. But, you know, these were accomplishments for him that he was independent. And, um, and at the end of his freshman year of high school, you know, we were living in Helsinki, Finland, because my husband worked for a European company. And Charlie attended the international school there. And he was accepted and was successful. He loved PowerPoints and and performing and um, he really had a, a good life. But then unfortunately at around 16, we started to lose him and we didn't know what was going on. And a couple of years later, he was diagnosed with a secondary diagnosis of regression disorder. And another uh, way to, th there really isn't agreement in the medical community yet what the specific diagnosis is. So some people say it's called Down syndrome disintegration disorder. And I think disintegration is a pretty good word because in an 18 month period, Charlie went from this vivacious, accepted, joyful teenager, you know, so not, you know, still emotional and all of that. I'm not going to paint it as it was. And more it was, independent, it was, like you said. Right. He was, an, he was a real, a real teenager. And, but he went into and became but a shell of that. And so kind of like a nervous breakdown, but with a loss of functioning. So Charlie didn't read. He didn't do any of the things that he did before. Couldn't listen to music. Didn't want to talk to people. In fact, he could barely speak. He would whisper, maybe. Um, but all independence, all functioning skills, you know, eating a bowl of Cheerios could take two hours. Um, he wouldn't get out of bed. And so we really lost him. And we took him to a clinic here in the U.S. And they said, you know, he's got regression disorder. And there's really nothing we can do about it. So, of course, 
as many parents do, you don't give up, you keep trying, you do all the things. And the, there were really two things that made a difference. One were relationships. People could reach him, who he really loved and cared about. Not often, but he would kind of come out of the fog for them. And the other was art. Now, he had really never been an artist, uh, and, but it was an activity he would freely do. We, I, would, I would put him in a bathtub and then get like a plastic container lid over the bathtub and set up watercolors and just let him sit in the warm bath and, and paint. And, and he loved that. I mean, it, it didn't bring him joy but he loved to be able to do something consistently that didn't seem to have anything attached to it that would trigger him and make him upset or crawl back into his shell. And, and yet the colors were always muddy. It didn't matter if I only gave him bright colors. He would mix and mix and mix until there was nothing but mud. And it was pretty heartbreaking. But for the next few years, it was one of the activities that he would willingly do. And it was, it seriously pulled him out, I think, because about five years into that, so his early 20s, he kind of reached a stabilization. You know, and I'll jump ahead and say, you know, Charlie is, is not the individual he was before 16. But he is at a place now where he's generally stable and finds joy in his life. And for me and his dad, and I think for him, that's, that's good. We're happy. But I brought a painting that I keep by my desk. And this is a painting he did the very first time, so about five years into this, where he used a color. And I don't know if you can really see it. Oh, but oh my gosh. He was wow. he's still into squares, you know, sort of Paul Clay, little squares. Um, he loves, he just loves squares. Um, but I kept that because I, I started crying. And, but it was, it was like a light in the darkness. And, and from there, it just, it just got better. You know, it wasn't like, oh, those, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> No. Oh my God, it's so no. emotional. Wow. Well, it's the power of art, I think, and, and the power to use it to express what's going on and moving through challenges. I'm, I'm not an art therapist, you know, I, at all. I'm a special educator by background, um, <laughs> but I've seen the power of art. So, um, well, I so think he did, that. He, um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, when we talk about, you know, having art move people, having art have the its own language, this is the true <laughs> happening in front of your eyes, right? I mean, oh. it's just happening right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's been incredible. And, you know, my mother-in-law is an artist, so Charlie always watched her in her own studio creating. And um, when we were living in London, when, when he was taking classes and he said that he wanted to be an artist, um, he had art tutors who had studios and they were his age. And he would go over and there were all these 20 somethings, you know, with spray paint and materials being crazy. And, you know, in these freezing cold studios where I was miserable, that they were all loving it. And he, he just saw, you know, there's just so much positiveness, the relationships and the art. And, and those two are so important to him. Well, and I think that you are an example and an inspiration, not only to me, but to so many. And I'm sure for Charlie to have you as his rock. I mean, he couldn't have asked for, for something better in his life. I mean, you have really uh, tapped and helped him get him to that special place that he's in now. Um, I think that you are absolutely encouraging people um, with disabilities that by creating and making things available to people, to kids with disabilities, you don't know what you're going to get. It can be a complete surprise. It could be a complete 
joyful mm-hmm. event for both of you and an awakening. And I think for Charlie, this is exactly what happened. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It's a joyful awakening when he comes in here. And I think, you know, my husband and I, we view this space as one, a creative outlet for him to fulfill his purpose to be an artist. And two, it's therapeutic for when times are super challenging for him because I I won't sugarcoat it. It is very hard for him, uh, sometimes multiple times throughout the day. Um, And this space is safe and nurturing, non-judgmental. Um, but also as, as a special educator, I want to get those synapses going. I want to challenge him. He's a lifelong learner. He, you know, for example, he loves learning online with videos from different artists. Um, I don't, I don't know if you know Nancy Hillis or yes. with Adele. Yes, she's a dear friend of mine. Yeah. Oh, so Art yes. with Adele. He loves <laughs> yes. that. Yes. And then recently yes. there's Jody King in Austin and she's full of energy and he, sometimes he's just laughing with her, you know, and yeah, and those things are really incredible. So, so we we use those opportunities to continue to learn. I mean, and, and I have to say, I mean, four years ago, I walked in here and I had to open an abstract 101 book because I may be an educator, but I didn't know the material and I am not an artist. So, but you have created um, this the space for Charlie and he is a true artist as he's an abstract artist and he is um, the fact that he's so innocent the way that he approaches art um, and we will see it in a little bit um, it just comes through you just want to not only embrace him but embrace his art because it's so joyful and it's just so beautiful and so honest and he has that you know, innate in him. You don't have to teach him that. So you're presenting him with the opportunities and the options. I also think, Karen, um, and you had told me before that not having people around him has affected him because he feels very isolated. He likes to have people around him. Absolutely, absolutely. Before the pandemic, um, we were maybe spending one to three hours in the studio, depending on, on how he was doing. Um, he is a, he's a diligent worker, but some days we weren't going to work in here for more than 30 minutes, and others day, other days he wouldn't stop for three hours. But during the pandemic, we really don't have anything else to do. So our days here are, will go on for four, five, six hours in the studio, and it's, it's draining, um, but there really aren't a lot of choices for him right now. And we're reaching that wall. I think we're getting there. So every day he looks at me and he says, you know, I want that shot. <laughs> so I'm working on it. I'm working on it, you know, so we can get, get people back I'm hope, in here. I'm hoping, yes. And I would be the first one to fly out there and paint next to Charlie. I'm, I'm just excited, you know. Oh, Like I said, I would love to paint next to him because I think he's energy. Charlie and, loves and- it. I know. Yeah, I, he, I, he's he, he absolutely so, loves having people here, artists and non-artists, to come and have chips and salsa, and get a canvas up and just throw some paint is is a joyful experience for him. Um, collaborating, uh, also in in other artist studios. I think you know. I, I told you that uh, he has a show coming up in April with Sage Studio, but then in June, he has another show where he collaborated with another Austin artist, Will Bryant, who's an amazing artist and just a genuinely kind individual. And uh, Will and Charlie painted in his studio last year together. And it was a highlight of Charlie's 2020 to be in Will's studio. And then came home and they worked on these pieces individually but kind of chatted about it and collaborated and then their show will be uh, in June and it's, it's fabulous and he you know they I think they they feed from each other's energies and mm-hmm. you know and I think that um, not only have you been isolated but now you had a terrible snowstorm and ice storm <laughs> and that yes. even put you more in isolation I would think and it's, it's true. been rough it, 
It's true because Charlie really has a routine to his day and he likes to stick to it. He likes to do his job, but he likes to reward himself. I mean, he's got such great life work balance. Uh, he works hard and then he wants to go for a car ride and do some errands and maybe stop and do a workout. He loves working out. And um, yeah, the snowstorm put an end to the car rides and the working out. Um, so so we're you were telling off. us about his routine and how he has an incredible work ethic, even sometimes <laughs> even more than other kids really, <laughs> like you're so impressed with his work ethic. Yeah. So walk us through his work ethic. How, how does that work? Um, so he comes into the studio and it will, it will vary what, what we do. So I, but he always has a list of what the day is. And it's his choice, but I provide him with three to five options. Sometimes they're, a, a couple are blank. Sometimes it's filled in. Um, he crosses off what he doesn't want to do, adds others. But he has three to five activities that he needs to work on for his Art for Dollars business. And he, he, goes, he goes for it. Some days he has to sign his name you know, on on prints, 100 prints, and that's what he's going to do. Um, other days, we are going to package things up to ship out, you know, so there's some business stuff. He looks at Instagram messages, and uh, we uh, write and respond. I type, and he talks, or else he'll write down what he wants, and then later on, when I have time, I'll enter that for him. Um, he always starts with a warm up after he reads his list. And I, I brought a, a few little warm up examples. Yeah, yeah, just for you to see, you know, like, so for example, one day he, he just wanted to draw with a pencil. So that's just what he did. That, he did that, drank his juice, and, and he was like, I'm ready to go. Um, another day he, he did this where he wrote in pencil a lot of W's and then painted it. And I said, what's that? And he said, well, I miss my brother, Will, because his brother who's been with us a lot oh. for the pandemic has now left. So he's missing oh. him. And he did and it in another green, day, which is his favorite color. Oh, he loves his brother. He loves both his siblings, but his brother's been oh. here and they were super, super close as little kids and now as adults. But this one he did, and this took about 45 minutes, and you can kind of, I don't know if you can see, but it's just yeah, all it's these textured. ridges, I mean, right? Super textured. Yeah, he just, he dumped paint, so he'll get up, he'll get the paint, and, uh, and then just kind of went back and forth and back and forth. It seemed very therapeutic and calming, and he didn't want to let go of it, you know? Um, so you just let so him that's what I love, too. I never know what he's Exactly. exactly. I mean, this is his space. I am, I'm the minion, you know. Um, is Charlie ready to show us his studio? Oh, Charlie, are you ready to show your studio? Number four on your list. You ready? Shall we go? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna pick up the phone and follow you guys and try to make sure that you can see Charlie and not me. Okay, Charlie Crash, Perfect. are you ready? I'm gonna read the top. Are you ready, Charlie? Here is my studio. Okay, I'm gonna show, okay, I'm gonna oops, this is the ceiling. Okay, I wanna come over here. You can see outside, that's, that's our house over there with the snow. Good and job. you have blue skies today, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. All right, Charlie, where are you taking us? This is my green up space. Okay, want to show the green up okay. space? Let's go, <laughs> let's go see that. Oh, yes. The sink. Okay. Here my goals. Green is my favorite color. Green is your favorite Green color. is your favorite color. And that's where, can you just step back a little? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not good at this. 
There we go. That's okay, Karen. You're All doing great. Up. <laughs> What's next? Here are my favorite tools. All right, your favorite tools. Your favorite tools. You see them? Here are my bag knives. Okay, I'm, I'm moving. Okay, I'm moving to the my palette knives. You are right here. Um, where are the palettes? There they are. Right there. You're oh, showing them. <laughs> okay. Oh, Charlie is a huge fan of scrapers. So we've got lots oh. of tools and a mask. All right. What's next, Mr. French? Here is some art. Where? Show me. Right here. Okay. And what is this series called? Do you remember? What have you been calling this? This is it. It's weird. I will paint today at 8 a.m. between a big fighting below. Okay, so Charlie wants to go over to the Fathoms Below paintings. Okay. And these are, these are a bunch of different paintings that he's done and he's working on. Not... So you can see the colors. And then what's next, Charlie? Number five on your list. Yes. Number five. You ready? Yes. What's number five on your list? What are we doing for number five, handsome? Joy paints. You ready? Yep. Okay, come on, get to work. Okay. You go do your Oh, thing. I'm so excited, Charlie. Thank you. I'm going to try to fix this so you can see him. Yes. And then after that, Karen, I would like to take a minute and go see the actual paintings. And we couldn't hear him well on the titles okay. of his no. paintings. Yeah, okay. So after the new year, Charlie um, decided he wanted to do squares, which he loves. And... Um, he decided he wanted blues and greens. So he did a half a dozen of those. And then he did those wild colored ones, which he, I don't know where that color palette came from, but he, he just went crazy, had the best time painting, those two massive kind of reddish yellow paintings. And he's still working on, on those. You know, I, he seems to be a little bit more free when he does it. So. We haven't sold them. We're kind of keeping them. I was thinking it'd be cool to do a show at some point, even in our backyard, you know, but. Um, yes, yes. Just highlighting, it, it, they're very free. They're very Charlie. And um, then this painting he's doing right now is from the second series in blues and black. It's called the In the Fathoms Below. And in that, the Fathoms um, Below, I love the title. Well, it comes from The Little Mermaid, and which is one of his oh. favorite childhood movies. And he has been working on this series for, you know, two plus years. It was one of the first that he developed. And he loves to come back to this, you know. So, um, Karen, do you leave him um, his paints ready to go? Does he pick them himself? How, how is that process? Um, can so you it, tell us a little bit about varies. that process? Okay, sure. It, um, it varies based on, um, so he, he has a bunch of paints on his right now that he selected. And they're pretty s similar in this series, you know, different shades of blue, whites, gray, black. Um, but I threw them together this morning after he picked them out last night and put them on the cart. So I do okay. a lot prep work but but the, that's he, what I was going to ask like um how long does it take you to actually get him ready for him to start doing just like a teacher in a classroom I need to do all the preparation so that when he walks in he's ready to go but that doesn't mean that we won't spend and we haven't spent days and weeks on colors and mixing colors and having Charlie pick colors and try them on canvases all on his own volition. You know, it's, it's like and the, I see the that red you, you have pink paintings. He picked all of that. Like, that's oh. definitely not a Karen choice. 
Okay, he loves so that's where I guess that's where my, my question was. His selection of color is his selection. So he says, today I want to use this one and that one and that one. And then you prepare it for him. But it's his selection, correct? It is. And oftentimes I won't prepare. You know, it, I'll bring over the bucket of blues. He'll say, I want blues and I want reds. And I'll put the, I'll put the buckets out, maybe on the floor. He'll work on the floor or the table. Um, and then he'll just put the paints directly on the canvases and mix them there. Um, wow. And he changes that as he moves around the canvas. So it almost seems like he's back in that tub mixing the colors that you had for him <laughs> in a freeing kind of way. And that's where you really saw how everything started to shift for him. And now you see it in fructition. I mean, for you, it must be such a proud relief. Um, I, I, I couldn't even start to comprehend the amount of words that you feel well it's it's you know because charlie's life is super challenging and when he's in here smiling there's just no better feeling practically in the world i mean i i think when you see your child truly joyful you, you as a parent are joyful as well so um but unfortunately, you're as happy as your most what is the, what is unhappy, child. unhappy you're child. child. Unhappy child. You're as happy as your most unhappy. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and I, I see that through. you have lists, the lists next to the painting, Karen. I do. So Charlie, um, so Charlie, for example, the painting that he donated. To feed America, feeding America to the do, sale. Do you have it, Karen? Because I, I, I do would love it. for people to see it. Yeah. Sure. So Charlie has made this series of paintings, and he is um, donating this beautiful piece that actually got sold yesterday. We were so lucky, but um, we sold this yesterday, and um, he has a series yeah. of these uh, paintings. And Karen, if you can talk a little bit about that series, that'd be great. Sure. So that is the Morning in Paris series. And that's also from a Disney movie, but also life experience. Because we lived in Europe for many years, Charlie has been to Paris many times and, and really likes Paris. And so, um, and loves Notre Dame because he loved the movie as a kid. And when his brother was here in the fall, they started doing the things they did when they were little kids. So they were watching those Disney classics, as Charlie calls them. <laughs> and yeah. he so he started working on this huge canvas to create Notre Dame. And then, um, you know, like, like many painters, a lot of canvases are just, we white over them, you white over them, you start again. And you know, we kept going and it was all very heavy, heavy and dark. Um, so we printed out the song, the, the words from the song that he loves. And those words are, morning in Paris, the city awakes to the bells of Notre Dame. And we put those words up here in the studio and, and the colors seem to change from the sort of, the, you know, how Paris is neutral grays with yes. black. Yeah. And, yeah. and so he let in some pinks and then they really became pink paintings uh, with a lot of tight and buff because he loves high flow acrylics. And then we moved from canvas to paper and in the fall, we've been working with scrapers because, you know, a lot of this is, you know, challenging but for him to hold it and scrape um, with a scraper or like tap to make lines. So he had been doing a lot of that in his warm ups and with other just experimental paintings and with the Paris morning in Paris paintings, he suddenly just did like lines like this and lines like that and said done. And we were like, wow, that's beautiful. We, we love that. That's so cool. Um, and so which it turns out that a lot of his followers liked them too. And he's been <laughs> kind of perfecting the process. It's been cool. It's fun. Yes. So, um, but it's like and the list, you know, there's a process to it all. It's not the same kind of freedom concept. 
but he understands it when you put it like that. He can read it and then it, it computes in his mind and then he can, he can then do. But right now it looks like what he said um, and how he approaches this in a very happy, uh, freeing kind of way. And I think maybe, you know, this is, it's, it's his own way of transferring his language and his love for, for life and for others Yeah, I think so too. I, and I never would have thought, you know, I, I knew he was creative. We're a pretty creative family. Um, and he's got a great imagination, but I didn't think that it would be art, but art it was, it was just from inside out and it's been glorious to see its effect on his life. Um, but he's, you know, so, he, okay. he's following the list, but he's doing his own thing. That's why they all look different. That's what I love about it too. You know, he doesn't get stuck in a rut. He's like, oh, let's do this, you know? Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. And um, yeah, he's, he's just, and he doesn't mind you talking. Like that doesn't, um, in his uh, painting. We talk, I, we talk about it. No, well, I'll, I have a confession. He calls me the old, old woman. You know, and sometimes he asks the old, old woman to be quiet. Um, okay. But, but we actually, so we have this list because, because visuals are huge, not just for Charlie, but people in the, in the Down syndrome community. So you'll see, it says, say hi, mom talks, right? Charlie answers questions. Charlie sits and drinks Gatorade and mom talks. So, um, you know, we set it up where, I have a time that I can talk, but then so I he stop. knows, right? But then you have to stop and let him be and have his quiet time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because it's not all about me teaching him or, or driving him. It's about him being free to be himself. Right. Oh, I love his mark making and, oh, I could sit all day and just watch him paint. Yeah, he's happy. And he loves the bigger the canvas, the better. Um, he really loves Do you think because he can move his arms better? Do you think he feels limited in a smaller space? I don't, I've thought about that. And I, I don't know. Um, maybe it's just more freeing to, to move your body like that. I think it is. I it is. I mean, I, I like working big. I, I, for me, it's very challenging as an artist to work small. And there's people that would say the other way around, right? You can work, mm -hmm. they, they love working small and something big, it's just like really daunting for them. But for me, it's this, this freeing sensation that I can almost dance with my painting and I can go back and forth. Actually, the painting that you see behind me um, it's a very large painting, right. but I, I, I painted that and then I can go back and forth seeing it from different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or room to breathe maybe without being so constrained. Yeah, I think if when Charlie's in a really good mood, he'll he does a series he calls free form, which is where he moves his body and he just gets loose. And maybe we play certain music that lets him do that. But that's unusual for him to be that loose. Um, okay. Um, but I think you're right. I think moving the body, it's certainly so good for him to get him up and changing shape and breathing. You know? Yes, yes, yes. So can you show us, Karen, the, can you go back for sure. a second and show us the, uh, the painting sure. that you have on the wall? First, the Fathoms Below paintings. So okay, Karen, there's a thing on your, on your phone that you can actually switch the camera so you can know exactly what you're showing us without, um, do you okay. see there's like Does a flipping? Though? Yep, perfect. Um, now you're so going to be seeing what we're seeing. 
Yeah, that'll help me actually. Um, so this is a work in progress uh, of a Fathoms Below painting. It's a big one. And then there's some smaller ones. So that's a tiny one for Charlie. Uh, Let me come over and move them. Um, they are so happy. It, this it's, is one. It, it, it captures. Oh, I love that. He did that the, the last weekend, I think. This one is back with the scraper, just practicing. He kind of covered up the sky because he had added pinks and yellows. And then I think he thought that was you know, not what he wanted. So he put a, a, a more neutral tone over it and then got out the scrapers. It's okay, interesting how he knows his design elements. His design elements are awesome. Yeah, that, that's what his teacher in London said too. Okay, so I'm pulling away here. Um, yeah. Woo! That has so much energy and yeah. movement. And, and the I'm going to bring it, bring it closer because for this one, he loves texture. And for this one, I don't know if you can tell, he yeah. used a round brush and made all, all these bumps and ridges. So it was pretty cool. And really cool. Yeah, it just seems like his um, way of designing things are, um, you know, the position of things, smaller versus bigger, the value and color. Um, right. It's, it's right on. I mean, and, and you, you almost can't teach that, you know, he has it in him. That's, that's what his teacher said. And so, all right, so this one is here. These are the big, massive ones where he was so happy. Wow. I mean, he was laughing and smiling. Then we have, these are sort of the first squares ones that he was doing right after the new year. Let yeah. Me, and these have not, again, I think these are really fascinating. I, I, I like them a lot. Well, so it's the repetition of that square that makes it so great because it's his language of, uh, geometric shapes and lines and it just um, they're balanced really well like I said he has this design eye for things that it's very right. unique and it's it's a gift really it truly is so here's the last one which was more rectangles and mm -hmm. then he got out this is the yellow so he added yellow to this one which he did right before he went into the pinks. How big is the pinks? They're 48 by 48. Okay. That's yeah, amazing. He's, he's loving that size. He's, he's loving his Gatorade right now. So, so I'm going to turn back the comments because I had turned them off. So if you guys have any questions for Charlie or for Karen, um, this would be a perfect time um, to ask Karen any questions. Um, and still, is he still around? Oh, he is. He's getting his chips and salsa. He's, you know, he's following his Great. list of the. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you good? After, after the Instagram live. No, 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 no. We're done. And I will get you toast when we are done the chips i agree now amazing and beautiful art um okay and my daughter okay. just said what an inspiring story and his art is so beautiful someone just asked um if the pink ones are done or is he or is he still working on them i i never um i never know really unless he tells me directly so i can say to him hey is it done and he might say yes or no oh, or um when he definitively knows he'll say white over it and and those <laughs> he he said just keep them so i don't know if he's going to go back to them or not um okay he hasn't really it's been a couple of weeks now and i i doubt he'll go back to them but i don't know Okay. Um, someone just asked, other than chips and salsa, what are his favorite snacks in the studio? Charlie, what are some of your favorite snacks in the studio besides chips and salsa? 
and, and toast. Hamburgers. Yes. Fries. 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 Hamburgers and fries. There's, there's a designer here in Dallas. Of course, we haven't seen him for the pandemic, but he, um, he is known as the hamburger man because he comes over with hamburgers and fries for Charlie. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so what kind of paints does uh, Charlie use? Does he prefer he, acrylic? I th yes. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I could handle oils. I, I don't, I think that's beyond my ability. Um, we have a lot of spray paint um, that Charlie was into for a while and occasionally he'll get out spray paint but it's mostly pencil and acrylics. So someone is asking if you have more paintings similar to the one that we sold that you can show. I do, I do. I have a big box of them. Let me just grab them for you, if you want. Okay. So are you now? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes, now, yeah, okay. yeah, that'd be great. Get up in the, in the storage space. So you can DM or or Karen for more information to purchase um, Charlie's work. Mm -hmm. um, but usually he sells his stuff over Instagram and, and Karen is more than willing to help you. And, and if I can be of any help, DM me as well. Uh -huh. um, but here's the series. So here's the most recent series. He did a, a, reels, a reel last week on Instagram. We did some littles. So he has done small six by six ones um again he just loves the high flow acrylics and the swiping of the scraper oh i love them he They're also amazing. adds gold a little bit not high flow he does i'm sorry he does both high flow and then a more thick acrylic um what kind of paper is that karen he is has that a, a watercolor lot it's a watercolor, but we've used with bigger ones, um, arches paper. Mm -hmm. Forgive me for not really knowing. <laughs> no, no, that's um, okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. He's got a, a lot of these. This is, these are certain colors. And then the ones like he had, he did do a bunch of these about a month ago. I just, we just haven't released them, honestly, because he's really busy. And that's amazing. It's, it's a mom and Charlie's show so we have to make sure and these are a little wilder there so this is we're kind of amassing a bunch to release because his followers are so wonderful and want to support him and then these are way more affordable than the large canvases that he does you know as you know shipping okay. can be outrageous Shipping can be outrageous, but um, if anyone um, wants to purchase these. So I, I, what I've been, yeah, what I've been saying. To yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, it um, we are releasing in March. Um, another larger one that he did for spring um, and we'll probably release a small one. So we're, we're releasing a bunch of those probably in March once we kind of get through the snowstorm and, and we can drive again. Did I cut out? Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, I read that somebody said. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm, Charlie and I will release the morning in Paris. We are going to release um, the first Friday in March, his new morning in Paris paintings. And there will be a lot of them. And so you should, we'll, we'll let you know on Instagram that that's coming up. And what we do is like eight o'clock uh, in the morning um, that day, we put them.
Bleed. Selling is, is a process for us in learning how to do that. Oh. Arlo, are you ready? But we've got you. Hey, Charlie, what's the last thing on your list? Charlie, Charlie French. Mm -hmm. What's the list? Yep, number six. We say thank you and bye bye. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Charlie. Bye-bye, <laughs> honey. It was such a pleasure to meet you, and I can't wait to paint with you soon. And enjoy your chips and salsa. Sounds good. <laughs> Can you look at the camera? Say thank you. Bye, thank Charlie. Thanks so much, Sandra. Oh, Appreciate fun. it. Thank you so, so much. What a And come paint, come paint with us with him. Thank you. We appreciate it. In okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much, Karen. Bye. Bye-bye.